G'day, 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 super friends. Welcome back to my channel. Today, let's have a look at the brand new Batman and Azrael action figures from McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse action figure line. Each of the figures comes in McFarlane Toys black, white, and blue window box packaging, as do all the rest of the figures. And the side of the packaging shows each of the characters' names and which comic book series they come from, whether it's the first or second White Knight series, while the other side just has the name, the DC Multiverse logo, and the back has an image of each of the characters from the comic book they come from, and other characters you can get in the figure series. Nobody new here to talk about all characters we've reviewed on this channel in the past. Anyhow, less talky, more opening. <laughs> there's one. <laughs> and there's two. Oh my god! The packaging just cut me! Here I am just merrily unboxing this thing away and see this ridge right here and right here. Well, be careful because they're, they're sharp! And here they are, looking sick! Ill as heck. Like, that's gotta be one of the best versions of Azrael I've ever seen in my whole life. And Batman, from where I sit, totally looks like he just jumped out of the comic. Like, I'm gonna go have to check my White Knight to make sure he's still in the pages. Anywho, here they are, both with their trading cards, accessories, figgy stands, and of course, you know, the figures. Now, before we look at each of the figgies, let's look at the accessories they come with. Starting with Azrael's primary weapon, his holy sword. As far as the sword's hilt goes, you've got a fantastic fantastically sculpted grip and pommel with the crucifix of Jesus on the guard and Ricasso and they've even included the fuller. It also comes with this really cool fire accessory so that he can slash you with holy fire. Yeah, that's pretty good. And for Batman, you've got a batarang on a great big thick rope that's supposed to hang from his side. And here it is all unfurled as if he's just tossed it or chucked it or whatever. And here's his back grapple. Yep. And here's Batman's trading card, the same as the one that we got in the back of the box. Feel free to pause this if you'd like to, to read Batman's data profile. And here's Azrael's trading card, again with one in the same picture as was on the back of the packaging. Feel free to pause and read his data file as well if you'd like. But the real reason we're here is to look at the figures, so let's do that, starting with Batman. Now this was a figure that, right from when it was revealed, I knew McFarlane was going to do a good job in delivering the finished product. I mean, we all know that the prototypes usually differ a little bit from what we actually receive in the package, but this guy looks fantastic. From his gigantic utility belt that is comic book accurate, the sculpted bat symbol with comic book accurate details right there in the bat, to his great big long armored boots, and his collared cape and grimacy face under that cowl. And I really do think that McFarlane got the face sculpt absolutely perfect. And I'm really, really pleased with his body proportions. Again, he looks like he just bat grappled right out of the pages of Batman White Knight. My only disappointment, and I mentioned this before when we were just shown the previews, is that the knife doesn't actually come out of the utility belt. But hey, at least the cape is a nice soft rubber. It doesn't impede Batman's movement whatsoever. So honestly, truly, really, no complaints about the look of this figure. For its articulation points, we know that the head's gonna be on a ball joint. Same thing with the torso. It, you know, it goes around, but it doesn't really get that much. Or I guess it's all right. And you've also got the ball jointed tornado waist, as well as little butterfly hinges and rounded hinges right there in the shoulders. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Whoa, that's a lot more than I thought he was gonna get. And let's not forget the bicep swivel. The unfortunate single jointed elbow. I do wish that there was a double jointed elbow and I've never liked that. What's that? Ugh, ugly. He's got the rounded hinge in the wrist and his glove actually kind of covers this one up so it's not as ugly as in previous figures. Round, 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 up and down. And of course, he's got that McFarlane groin, the weird hingy this, front, back, and spready. And what about the knees? Ugh. Double jointed. Also got the rounded ball hinges in the ankles and toes. Up and down, up and down. Also, there is a bit of this kind of motion right starting at the groin, but there's no thigh cut, obviously. I mean, you'd see it if it was there. You'd be like, yes, there it is. There's a thigh cut. And now on to Azzy. And oh my goodness, I'm just, I'm nerdgasming over how awesome this figure looks. Anybody that says action figures are just for kids. Show him this! That'll make him think twice about making fun of you for being an adult man-boy. Wait, what? I know that Todd's thing is to make stuff that he thinks will look cool up on a shelf, and... Well, I gotta hand it to him. In this case, he was right. This will look cool up on my shelf. 
I mean, just look at this thing. How could it not? He's got Azrael's dangly wanglies that hang off of him, these streamery things, and they're made out of a nice, soft rubber. I like these. And all of the gold detail work on this figure looks pretty fantastic. Like Batman, his knife doesn't come off. It's just like, hi, I'm stuck. But he's got a little belt strap he do. He's got his cross hanging down there. The fleur-de-lis up here. He's got his wings up here. The bottoms of his sleeves have that detail work just like the comics. Hey, look at these little booties. Cool looking gauntlets. Yep, love it. And there's two tones of paint on here to give some variation, some darker and some lighter. And there's just as much going on in the back as there is in the front. I just, I really, really love this. McFarlane knocked it out of the park with this guy. And let's not forget Azzy's face. Dude, he, he got it right. He, perfection. Mwah! C'est magnifique. Now, you're probably wondering exactly how articulated this guy is considering how big he is and how clunky he looks, so let's find out. For starters, I like how Todd tackled the head because the head itself is, is articulated on the neck, but then you've got articulation right there inside of the torso. But for those of you who want him to be able to look right up, well, <laughs> you won't be able to see anything. The torso articulation right here is hidden quite nicely underneath his suit, and he is perfectly ready to go disco dancing, because that's a lot of movement, and the same thing for his tornado waist. So there's a lot of torso articulation. Like Batman and the rest of the multiverse figures, he's got a butterfly hinge, as well as the rounded hinge right there in the armpit, a bicepsual swivel, and a single jointed 90 degree elbow. I know, can't win them all. <laughs> and even though he's got the rounded hinge, in the wrist, much like Batman, I feel like the sculpt of the figure actually kind of hides it. Oopsie. Downsy. Oh, a roundsy. And looking up his kilt, you can see, again, like the rest, he's got that typical McFarlane groin articulation. It's got some of this going on. Some of that. Mm, some of that. And plenty of that. You can see that his knees are double jointed and dude are they ever crunchy. He's got the rounded hinges in the booties there and you know for him having these kind of clunky shoes that's that's not very bad. And look, toe articulation. All in all, a fine looking pair of figures indeed. Now let's do some comparisons. Again, starting with Batman. First we have him with two customized figures. I know it's hard for me not to use customized figures because most of my Batmans have been customized. But on this side, it's a Mattel Dark Knight Batman, mostly. And on this side, it's a Mattel DC Universe Classic Scale DC Superheroes Batman, mostly. And now on this side, we have a DC Direct Batman Incorporated, and on the other, we have a NECA scale Batman. Man, he's a big boy. And just in case you were hoping to pose him alongside Batgirl and Nightwing, here he is with them. And for Azrael, I've brought in this DC Direct one on the left, and a DC Superheroes from Mattel on the right. So now, what do I think of these guys? Well, clearly, you've made it to the end of the video, and you've likely been paying attention, so it's blatantly obvious that I am madly in love with these figures. I like them. I like them a lot. From their comic book accurate details, the fantastic sculpts, the faces both being perfectly accurate in likeness to the source material, in comparison to each other, they're a perfect match. And I can't think of any reason I would ever not tell you to go, go get them. Get them while you can. Go find them before the scalpers get them. Because these guys are fantastic. These are going to look like fire on my shelf. Now, I know that at this point, it really just sounds like I'm shilling for McFarlane toys. But honestly, I'm not. He didn't send me this for free, and he doesn't even know I exist. I just really like these guys. And I think that you will too. No, scratch that. I'm convinced that you will too. But anyway, that's my big dumb opinion. Thank you so much for watching my review. And here's what I have to say, and I will see you with the next one. Have a DC day, everybody, and take care.